Hello, and welcome to uh, a, a different kind of video, I suppose. A little bit. It's kind of a tutorial, I guess? Tips and tricks? I don't know. Call it whatever you will. But I'm gonna show you a couple of Photoshop things uh, in terms of making thumbnails, I guess. This is what I mainly use it for. You can, you know, feel free to use it for whatever the hell you want, really. I, I'm not gonna tell you what to do with the knowledge that I'm about to bestow upon you, but, you know, it's there. So, a, a couple of tools that I use and a couple of techniques I use to just sort of manipulate images, really, and get what I need. This is uh, something that we learned in school. We had a, a, a crash course of two weeks in Photoshop like 20,000 years ago, or whenever I went to school, I forget. But anyway, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I usually do, uh, mostly for thumbnails, but also just to sort of mask out and create uh, transparency in images that don't come with transparency otherwise, and also some cleanup and stuff. So uh, let's do that, shall we? First of all, I'm gonna mask out, or I'm gonna show you a, a way to mask out some stuff in an image if you want. Uh, transparency uh, and an image does not come with transparency. For example, say you'd want this logo or you'd want this silhouette of these people down here. Uh, rather than, you know, selecting the magic wand tool and clicking around, uh, trying to get a clean mask, there are a couple of other ways you can do this in. First of all, uh, I'm gonna just zoom in. Hopefully this shows up in the capture, but you can see that this image is quite quite severely compressed. There's a lot of compression artifacting going on. This is a JPEG image, and as such, we can see that it's, uh, well, it, it looks like absolute trash. But there are a few ways to deal with this, especially if uh, it's a, a relatively clean and flat image like this. There's a, there's a lot of contrasting colors, uh, and I chose this one as an example uh, because if you want to mask something out, it's easier to do that with... Uh, you know, hard hard edges. So first of all, what I would do with an image like this to clean it up in terms of JPEG artifacting is to go into filters, blur, surface blur. Now, if I click this, you can already see that it's doing a couple of things here. Uh, I'll, I'll flick the preview on and off. Basically, it's it's trying to make solid colors happen uh, as, as best as possible. You can still see that, I mean, it retains gradients and stuff. You can play around with these uh, radiuses and thresholds to, to blur it, uh, well, <laughs> in any way you choose. But in terms of cleaning up JPEG artifacting, this can actually be a very useful tool if you use it somewhat sparingly, just to sort of get rid of these pixelated, compressed to hell edges uh, and clean that up. You do tend to lose a bit of detail. This is where playing around with the threshold and with the, with the radius uh, amount comes in. But in terms of just cleaning up edges, what you could always uh, do if you really want to retain the, the detail within these uh, characters in this case is focus on the edges. Uh, and I would also recommend then to make a copy of the original layer, apply the effect to the copy, and then you could erase the center of this character to bring back, say, these buttons on his vest. So technically there's a hole there, but you know, you have the clean edges and then you merge the two layers and there you go. You have a, a somewhat cleaned up image in terms of compression artifacting. Um, and if I would then go on uh, to do a mask for this, if it's not, we'll get to other types of masking in a bit, but for this image in particular, if I wanted to mask out, say, the logo or the silhouette of these people, I'm gonna take a, a copy of the layer and I'm gonna hit Control shift u to turn it black and white. That's step number one. This is something that is very useful if you have pictures with a clean background. Say you have a, a, a headshot of a person and you want to mask them out, but you want to retain hair strands and, and, and stuff like that. Stuff that is kind of finicky to manually mask. Uh, this is a good way of doing uh, that as well. But I'll take a copy, I'll make it black and white. There's a couple of edges here that aren't looking too hot, so I'm gonna do the blur, surface blur, again, and I'm gonna clean this mask image up uh, a bit more. So we'll we'll see some cleanup happening here. This is looking, this is looking decent. So what I want to do now is I want to make this into uh, as black and white of a picture as possible. So I'm gonna apply a curves to this, and I'm gonna just start pushing pushing the white. What I wanna retain here is the black. Um, so I'm gonna push the white points of the image up 
until everything disappears. Everything goes completely black and white somewhere around here. And I'm going to bring the blacks in a little bit as well. So now we basically have a, a clean silhouette of these people. I'm going to merge that down, control E to merge top to bottom. Uh, and then I'm going to have this image here. Again, I'm going to hit control M for the curves. Uh, this is, well, basically the same thing, but without adding it as a layer. I'm going to hit this one, which is uh, set white points. If I hold down alt, I can see uh, a, a heightened contrast version of the image. You can see some specks here that aren't completely uh, white. So I can click that with th this dropper tool and select the white point to hit all of these to mask. I'm basically setting the white point to whatever this pixel is. And now you can see that I'm, I'm more, more uh, definitively hiding everything that isn't pure white. There you go. Now I have a pure white background against these these characters here. I hit OK on that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to control A and control C, copy the whole thing. And I'm going to go into the quick mask layer here. And then I'm going to control shift V, paste it. Control shift V pastes in place. If I just hit control V, uh, it would paste everything into the center of the image if you if you have a if you if you're only selecting let me show you an example of this real quick if I'm uh, selecting only this bit for example and I hit copy and then I go into the mask and I paste it it's gonna paste it there but if I hit control shift V it's gonna paste it exactly where it was for this for this uh, for this example though it doesn't really matter because we need everything I'm gonna copy that paste it in here and then exit quick mask again what that does is it selects everything that is black and doesn't select anything that is white. So if you have a black and white picture, even if you have a gradient, it's going to select the gradient as well. You can see this on some of these characters. They have like not perfectly black pixels. Uh, they have like some some gradient to them. Again, if you have like a, a character with hair or strands of hair or fluff or anything that is a gradient, this is going to select anything that is gray or black or you know it's going to select the gradient as well uh, you can see it here that stuff isn't 100 percent red um, that means that you know it has opacity so i'm backing out again and then i'm going to hide all the layers make a new layer shift f5 to fill it and i'm going to fill it with black i'll do this rather than copy and paste to get rid of any sort of potential edges and artifacting but here we go that's it. That's how you do a, a good black and white clean mask. And now you can see that we have retained the transparency here. So we're not getting a, a purely black and white image, but we do still have some of the, the nuances in the, the, the black of these silhouettes. And now I can take this and, and paste it wherever the hell I want. If I am making a thumbnail for Red Dead Redemption, look it. I can just blam, post them in here. I can do whatever the hell I want with the background. Pretty nifty, if I do say so myself. But that is not the only way you can mask out things. Uh, again, if I go back to the original image here, say I want to mask out these uh, letters, for example. I could do the same thing, but there is also the... Let's start with the magic wand tool for now. So magic wand, again, I'm sure you've used it. If you, if you click an area, it'll select all of the similar pixels. You can set the tolerance here. But 16 is a, is a good base number. So I'm going to just shift click all of these letters one by one. Just select everything that I want to mask out. And then when I, when I have a rough selection, I'm going to hit select and mask. And this is, a, this is a very, 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 very useful tool in Photoshop. Uh, you can select up here in the view mode, you can view it against different backgrounds. You can view it against black, you can view it on any layers you have beneath it. You can view it on the onion skin, whatever you want to, you know, look at it against. Uh, you can see that there's some like weird redness still going on in these edges. You can smooth them out, you can feather them, you can contrast, add uh, contrast to the edges. And just change it up as you like. Shift the edges, make them a bit tighter. You can shift them in to get rid of some of this red. If you have a single colored image like this, you can also turn on decontaminate colors, which basically takes 
these colors and tries to apply it to the edges. So you can see that it makes the edges white in this case, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, depending on your image. Um, but let's let's see. Let's add some contrast into this, and uh, let's see. This is uh, this is looking okay. Let's turn off the smoothing again because I feel like we're getting a lot of these little holes in the letters. Uh, and I'm gonna turn up the smart radius a bit just to see what that what that looks like. This is a decent mask, I think. I'm gonna shrink the edges a little bit just to get rid of some of that red, and then I'm gonna hit OK, and it's gonna just make a mask for it. So I can either control click this mask to select everything if I want to copy that and for example bring it into this one I can hit uh, control shift U to make it completely black and white get rid of any red and then I'm gonna hit control I to invert it and here we have a, a, a logo a clean logo we can just put wherever the hell we want look at that isn't that a good thumbnail already no, it isn't. It's kind of boring. But, you know, it's there. You can do whatever the hell you want. Use it as you choose. <laughs> Second, or I guess third, type of masking technique is um, a little bit more complex, but it's very useful and very, very, uh, very frequently used by me. Anyway, so I have a, a couple of screenshots here from the games that I wanted to use for maybe thumbnails uh, that I think could fit this one. I, well... This one wouldn't necessarily be uh, a good thumbnail because you can't really see a face all that well and usually faces uh, is uh, preferable in terms of thumbnails because people tend to be attracted to faces and click them. If you want to be uh, slightly clickbaity about it. If you just want to make a cool image, that's a different story. <laughs> but I have a couple of... Uh, this I like this face. This is a good sad face. Uh, I think I'm going to use this for something. Uh, don't mind the subtitle there. Uh, this, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like we should use this for the example. Uh, this one is a bit blurry. So let's go with this one for now. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to do a couple of cool things here in, in terms of, well, cheating with Photoshop. Today on Cheating with Photoshop, first of all, I want to get rid of these subtitles because they're kind of uh, ruining this this image. So I'm going to do a rough selection here of just this this box of, of text. Uh, I'm going to take a copy of the layer just to make sure that in case ever, anything mess up messes up, uh, we're good to go. So shift F5 again, but I'm not going to fill it with color this time. I'm going to fill it with content aware. Hit OK. And you can see, bam, sorted. Basically, what content aware does is that it tries to look at the picture around it and calculate what should happen behind it. It doesn't always work, and uh, a lot of the time it's kind of messy, uh, especially if it's a big area that you're trying to, to cover up or fill in. Uh, but with uh, smaller things like, like this text box here, and it's, it's kind of obvious that this line of uh, the image is supposed to continue with this line of the image. So Photoshop has a, has, a, has a lot to work with there. You can see that it sort of fails on this kind of lapel thingy here because it doesn't know what, where this is supposed to go since it's, it's supposed to go in here and get covered up by this strap. So Photoshop doesn't really know what, where do I, I don't, I, I, I let's just blend it out, I suppose. Um, and the same, same over here, it doesn't, it doesn't 100% get it. So uh, it's, it's a, it's a hit and miss. There's a lot of uh, cleanup you need to do when you, when you're doing this, but this is a thumbnail, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Bam, sorted. Okay. Next I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to select the character. And this is where things can get a little bit tricky. First of all, let me just select the actual picture so we get rid of these black bars. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to hit Control N for a new document. I'm going to paste it in here. So we don't have to bother with any black bars or any other edges. Now, what I want to do is select the character and blur the background even more and maybe make it a bit darker to make the actual person stand out. So what I'm going to use here is the quick selection tool. If you if you if you're on the magic wand and you click and hold down, you can select the quick selection tool. And what this does is it allows you to paint areas. If you just click and hold down, you can paint areas and it's going to try to select those areas 
uh, or whatever it feels is relevant. So if I if I try to paint his hat here, you can see that it's gonna it's gonna base uh, the selection on contrasts and colors. So if you have a lot of contrast and you have a lot of colors in a picture, uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a, an easier selection for the for, for Photoshop to do. So I'm gonna have uh, hold down Shift and add to this. Uh, we're gonna have some issues with this image because down here you can see that his coat is very similar to these shadows. So we'll see when we get there if if Photoshop is gonna be able to select that. Uh, you can see here it selected some of the sky because it's very close uh, in terms of luminance to the to the skin of his cheek here. They're very similarly lit. So I'm gonna hold down Alt instead to subtract. I'm gonna try to paint that away and then Shift add it back in. Uh, that's a that's a better selection. We'll we'll clean all this up. Ooh, that's a bit much. We'll clean all this up in a minute. See. Uh, here, right here, it's having some issues. So I'm going to use the normal lasso tool and just manually select that bit like that and then go back to this one. Here again, it's selected a bit too much. So I uh, might have to use... No, I think that's okay for now. Well, maybe. Again, we'll clean up all of this stuff in the select and mask tool in a second. All we need now is a semi-rough mask of this character. So I'll do this, I'll, I'll come down here. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the more slowly you draw your lines here, the more accurately Photoshop is gonna analyze the image. I don't know if that's a placebo effect, but it feels like if you're doing it more slowly, you get a more accurate result. I don't know if that's true. Maybe it's just because it feels better. Uh, but anyway, bam. So as you can see here, it selected all of these shadows as well because they're they're so similar in terms of luminance. So I'm just gonna not even bother. I'm just gonna use the normal lasso tool and alt deselect this bit right here. Like that. Okay, so we have our character selected. I'm gonna go into the select and mask tool again. If you can't see this tool, you might just be on the wrong selection here. Uh, easy way to fix is just hit M and then it's there. M for mask. So we'll go up, hit select and mask, and we'll get a selection of our character. You can see that there's a, a couple of bits and pieces lacking. For some reason, it didn't select this bit of his beard. So I'm just going to paint that in. Now, you have a couple of tools here. You have a refine edge tool, and you have a, a brush tool. The brush tool is what you'd think it is. It's the brush. If you click and add, you'll paint more in. If you hold down alt, you'll paint stuff out. That's basically all it is. It's a it's a very basic brush tool. And you can see that up on this hat here, we did have some issues. So I'm just going to use the brush tool, paint it in. I'm going to paint this little bit out. Uh, there's something I want to paint out for sure. This crap over here I want to paint out. There's a couple of green bits here from the vegetation in the background that I'm not quite fond of. Paint those out. I think that's okay. Uh, here I'm going to paint some stuff in. Okay, that's good. Perfect. Fit on screen, please. Now, we have a refine edge tool here. This is a, a kind of a one of those hit and miss kind of tools. But if I'm gonna, if I'm, if I'm struggling with some of the edges, like on his beard here, I can use this and try to paint a little bit. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a smaller brush actually, because this is a bit big. But what it's supposed to do is try to focus in on edges and find more definition in them. It's gonna it's gonna do some extra thinking uh, and basically try real hard to get these specific edges right. You can see that it's real really trying to like blend these these edges in with the background. I'm just gonna do a couple of clicks. Mm, maybe subtract a little bit. Maybe not do this bit right here. Uh, that, that that could work. That looks better. It it looks a little bit messier and it's supposed to be a little bit messy because it's. It's his magical fancy beard hair, um, but in combination, you know, with these tools, you can you can you can find some some combination of clicks that work. That's okay, I think. Okay, for now we'll deal with that. Fit on screen, please. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the smart radius. If you go too far, this is a, this is something you'd want to use sparingly. 
Uh, if you go too far with this, it's gonna go crazy and just try to select, well, way too much or way too little, uh, depending. You can see that <laughs> without the smart radius, it's just, oh no, his eye. You probably don't want to select his eyes, do you? Well, no, Photoshop. Actually, I do. But it's, it can be useful to just clear up some of the noise you get in edges. For some reason, it's it's not wanting to select this bit of his, his hat. So I'm going to try to just paint that in a little bit. Uh, anyway, that's okay in terms of selection. And then I'm going to smooth it out just slightly and feather it a little bit just to get some artifacting away from the edges here. I'm not quite fond of this bump here, so I'm going to just paint that out. Perfect. Um, and I'm going to paint some of this back in on his beard just to even that out a bit. And I'm going to add some contrast to this. So these these are basically added on top of one another. If you f if you feather it out a bunch and then add contrast, you're gonna add contrast to the feather. They come one after the other. So think about that uh, for a second. Okay, stop thinking about it though, because we're moving on. I'm gonna add some contrast in, and I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna shift the edges, and I'm not gonna decontaminate because I don't think I need to. But that's a decent selection. Hit OK. Now we have our character selection. I'm gonna copy and shift, control shift V paste in the same spot. So we have our dude selected. Now, to blur the background here, one could just go into the background layer, one could go to Gaussian blur and just blur the shit out of it. Um, but the problem we run into here is that we get this sort of halo effect, this sort of weird like edge blur because our character is still in the background layer, he's getting blurred as well. And that's creating this sort of blurry line outline. So undo that, and then here's the sneaky part. Control, click the layers, select our character again. Hide him, uh, and now we have just the base layer. What I'm gonna do here is go to select, modify, expand. I'm gonna expand our selection by five. So now we're selecting slightly more than the character, um, just to sort of cover our bases here. And I'm gonna hit, hit Shift F5 again to bring up the fill. And I'm gonna use Content Aware. Now, this is where you, you get to see the, the flaws in Content Aware, but it doesn't matter. Check it. Bam. Uh, ba bam. So, we've basically removed the character. Uh, you can see that it's cutting off the leaves weirdly here. There's some, I don't know, guff in the air for some reason. The same rock happens twice, and there's just weird shit going on down here. Who knows why? But that doesn't matter, because our character is still here. And we now have a clean background. We can blur the shit out of it without getting a weird halo effect, because there's no dude in it. Isn't that cool? Also, I don't like Gaussian Blur, so what I personally prefer doing, and this is completely to taste, is use the tilt shift effect. It's just a nicer type of blur. It just it's just a more accurate accurate type of camera blur than uh, than the Gaussian blur is. You can pos position it where you'd want to. I'd like to keep some of these details. I don't know, personal taste again. You could look at that. It's so blurry. Um, just to make the character stand out a bit more. So I'm going to do something along the lines of this uh, and keep it keep it somewhat in focus down here. Maybe around there is a good is a good way of going. Enter, please. And there we have a nice blurry background with a clear character in the middle. So, this is where you start to do some trickery with colors and contrast. I usually tend to bring down the background slightly just to, uh, to make the character stand out a little bit more as well. So I'm gonna do that. If I hold down Alt and I click between the layers, I'm making these curves apply to just the layer below not everything. So you can see that he is still affected by the curves, but the background is not. So I can boost him a little bit, just to make him stand out a little bit more without making things look unnatural. Uh, I'm gonna keep some of the highlights in this picture, uh, or this background, just to sort of keep that nice natural contrast. And I'm gonna add everything back together. Control E, select Control E, uh, A, C, V, copy, paste, bam. Now we have a nice dude here with a nice, cool, blurry background for our thumbnail needs. 
Uh, we can position him however we like. Now, something else I like doing with pictures in general is to focus your eye in on where I want the, the viewer to uh, draw his attention. So I'm going to do a selection uh, around the outer borders of the image, something like that. Now I'm going to create a mask curve. So if I go uh, dark with this, look at that. Control I to invert it and then go in here and blur it a bit. We want to create uh, a sort of vignette effect here, just to sort of darken the edges. Um, and then Control T to, to move this around, scale around, free transform it. So I want to I wanna bring attention to his face. So that is, that is decent. And then I'm going to make a selection for just his face or uh, thereabouts. And again, curves, and I'm going to brighten this a little bit. Uh, keep some contrast in it, but just keep it nice and vivid. And again, blur this mask. That's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to add a third mask on top of it all. And just add some, some more red into it. And I'm going to add some blue in the shadows and some yellow in the highlights. Just to make it look nice and cozy looking. And then add it all together. And there you have a nice little, little thumbnail picture. Uh, feel free to add, you know, text of choice. Maybe something buzzworthy like uh, Fort. Night, Fortnite. That's that's cool. That's that's something that that you know gets people to click your your videos. Uh, put that in there, uh, just to sort of get that get that um, free free clickbait marketing in there. Bam. He's he's very surprised about the fact that Fortnite is in uh, 1899, as one would be, I would think. But there you go. That's a way to make uh, a thumbnail. And I want to point out one extra thing with this uh, type of masking and vignetting. You can see it maybe if it shows up in the, in, in the video at all. You can see some banding up in the sky here. Let's just, let's make a new, a completely new one. Uh, because this is something that is just, this is an additional, additional info. I just thought of it just now because this is something that I've run into uh, a lot in the past. And in case you don't know, this is a good bit of knowledge let's just make a picture let's just make a one flat color like this say you want to make a gradient on this uh, and uh, you want to do like a, a cool little just gradient background like this i'm gonna make it like something like okay so here we have some quite kind of annoying banding issues i don't know if this shows up in the video hopefully it does but you can see that there are some some annoying banding issues that goes across the gradient like this in this direction. And to avoid this, if you have a very blurry mask like this that creates a lot of banding, what you can do is get it to the way you want it first with these tools here because they're they're quite handy and useful to just blur masks with and make them like the way you want them to look. But they do create these annoying banding issues, which uh, is, is kind of ugly to deal with and kind of something you probably do not necessarily want in your image but when you have your masks or your gradients the way you want them to look what you can do is control click the mask it's going to make a selection for the mask then you want to uh, right click and delete the mask and then click the mask down here again without removing your selection or doing anything else just click the mask now you'll get the exact same mask back but with no feathering this is just a, a pure selected made to order mask but it still has the banding. Though what this means is that since there's no feathering in this mask, you can add noise to it without the noise also getting blurred. So if I add noise now, a uh, very low, very low amount of noise, say 1%, you can see that we're getting rid of all this banding. Uh, let me see if I can uh, enhance this with some, some contrasting curves here. Let's see. Hopefully this shows up in the video. Again, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure this might get lost in compression, but trust me on this, okay? I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make the banding as visible as possible. Okay, let's go back to our mask. This, so this is the mask without any noise, and then we go into add noise, and you can, you can see what it's doing here. You can even see some banding within the noise because now we've bumped the contrast so much. I'm gonna put this at one percent, and. Just check out here, we have all the banding in the world with the noise, 
no banding at all. Because we're breaking it up with noise, we're making it less consistent, so there's not enough uh, of the same shade for it to cause banding. And when you zoom out then, you, you're, you're good, you're fine. It doesn't, it doesn't show in the grand scheme of things, but you're, you're rid of this ugly banding. So that could help with some of the artifacting like you see here uh, when you do these types of vignetted thumbnails, for example, or photographs in general. But that is some of the stuff I use for thumbnails uh, and photo editing in general. Selecting the character, removing the character from the background, blurring the background, vignetting, highlighting the character, adding some, some nice colors to it to make it all pop a bit more and stand out a bit more. And that's a thumbnail. There you go. Use these techniques wisely, my friends, and go forth and thumbnail. Or, you know, not thumbnail. It, it, you could... You could also just not make thumbnails at all and just do cool pictures. You know, you could even do something cool with this since since we have since we have the dude masked out here in our old uh, where where was it in our old layer here. Since we have the dude separate, you could even like say we add these together and then we add these together, and then you could take both of these layers into your your thumbnail composition here. Let's just. Select both of them and drag them in here, right? Now we have the character in the background separated in, inside of our thumbnail master edit here. So if we position all this, still having both of them selected, you can treat them as one layer, but we have the option to then do something like real crazy, like putting, putting the logo behind the character inside the same shot. What? What is happening? How is that even possible? Well, you know, with these techniques, anything is possible. Check that out. That's not so bad, is it? You could even lock the uh, opacity of this layer, hit Control U, and then colorize it and make it like, make it like red, like the Dead Redemption. And then we'll add like a, an effect. Let's add some stroke to it. We'll add a white stroke, check it, a white stroke uh, on the outside. Wow! What is this? Is that a thumbnail? I think it is, you know. I think it is. Anyway, I hope uh, some, of these, uh, <laughs> some of these techniques have been useful to you. Uh, enjoy, or, or not, you know, free, free, of, free of charge. And goodbye! <laughs> Take care.